sixth grade friends. I hope you guys are all doing really well. I miss you so much. Um, and I'm excited to start doing these recorded science videos for you guys. So if you look at the whiteboard, at the top it says seasonal changes. We need to finish learning about seasonal changes. Okay, if we started way in the beginning of first grade, we've been talking about it in the fall, we talked about it in the winter, and now it's a new season, right? We've been in a new season for a little over a month, so it's time to do our seasonal changes in this new season. And that season is, I'm gonna write it in a different color, spring, okay? It is springtime. It's such a fun time of year. And everything starts to come back to life. And we're gonna talk a lot about that. So the seasonal changes throughout all four seasons, right? The things that change always are what? I want you guys to think about it. What do we know that changes? Every time the seasons change, these things outside change as well. Well, the most obvious one is the trees, right? We do our tree observations every time the seasons change. So I'm just gonna draw a quick tree, right? We know that all plants, not just trees, but all plants change, especially in the springtime, right? They start to come back to life, they grow their pretty petals, and everything gets colorful again. What's another seasonal change? What else do we know changes throughout the year? Maybe you guys are thinking about daylight. I'm gonna draw a big old sun on the side of the board over here. Right? We have a whole lot of sunlight right now. The sun comes up at a regular hour in the morning and it stays for a long time at night, right? It's almost going down around like after seven now, which is amazing. So I'm gonna outline that with a, an orange marker too, just to, to make sure you guys can see it. So daylight changes. What else? Anything else? What about the animals? Animal behavior, right? I'm just gonna write the word animals. Animals are coming out of hibernation or they're coming back from migrating to warmer places. So animal behavior changes when the seasons change too, right? We're not gonna talk about animals. We are just going to focus on how the trees change and then what the sun has to do with it, okay? Do you guys remember, now I don't have my model from the classroom with the earth and the sun attached to each other, but I do have this sun drawing and I do have this earth ball with me, okay? Do you guys remember what happens to the earth all year long? Right, it orbits the sun, right? It goes around the sun once every year why sometimes people might say like happy birthday another year around the sun because every time it's a new birthday for you that means you've gone around the sun right it also does that tilt thing that we talked about a while back right the earth tilts on an axis so in the warmer months our planet is tilting towards the sun so that means that we're getting more time with the sun, longer daylight, and we start to warm up. The temperature gets warmer, okay? In the winter time, we're tilting away. Our planet is tilting away, and in the fall, we're also kind of tilting away, right? So that's why it's a little bit cooler during those seasons. But in the springtime, we are starting to move closer in our tilt to the sun, all right? So because there's more sunlight, that's why everything in nature starts to come back to life. Like the grass gets greener, the plants start to pop up, the flowers and the trees are changing too. So today, I know you guys probably already guessed it, but we're gonna do our spring tree observations, okay? All right, so before we get started on our spring tree observations, I just wanted to remind you guys of what the worksheet looks like. We have the information page where we record today's date, the season that we're in, the temperature, we record how it feels outside, and then the bottom part, we have to finish that sentence starter, okay? And then the second page is just the blank 
template where you're going to draw your observations, all right? So before we get started on that, we need to kind of recap what our fall and our winter tree observations looked like and what we wrote on those information pages. Now, because you guys don't have your science journals with you and you can't just flip back, I'm gonna remind you, okay? So I did some quick drawing and here's what your fall tree looks like, right? You guys, a lot of you had leaves on the ground. You could see the branches that it wasn't like full anymore with leaves. They were starting to fall. Um, it was about 50 degrees out the day we did it. We all circled that it felt cool outside, right? So we might have had sweatshirts or light jackets on, but it wasn't freezing out, okay? And when you did your writing piece today, the leaves on my tree look, most of you wrote colors like red, brown, yellow, and orange, because the leaves were starting to change color, okay? For your winter tree observations, which we did in like December and January around there, your trees looked like this. They were completely bare. There were no leaves anymore. There weren't leaves on the ground at all, right? It was about 20 degrees out. We circled cold. It was pretty cold outside. I know some classes couldn't even go outside. It was so cold. We had to do this from a window. And then for the information page today, the leaves on my tree look, we actually had to cross that sentence starter off and we had to instead write, there were no leaves on my tree, okay? So just to remind you what we did in the fall, what we did in the winter, and what you're going to do today, okay? All right, boys and girls, so what I have is the information page right here. It's blank. I'm gonna remind you how to fill it out, okay? And then, I'm gonna go do my spring tree observation, all right? I'm not gonna show you what it looks like because I don't want you guys to, you know, think that you have to draw the same looking tree that Miss Millerick draws. I want you to actually draw a tree, whoops, that you find in your own neighborhood, okay? But I definitely wanted to remind you how to do the information page part, okay? So, I'm gonna stand on this side. It's a little bit easier since I'm a righty. And remember, this video is being recorded ahead of time. So don't write the same date, don't write the same temperature as me. I'm just reminding you how to do this page. All right, so the day that I'm making this video is May 6th. So on this small line, I'm gonna write six, and then the year is 2020, okay? The season is, we already know that, the season is spring. And remember, that's a special word, so do an uppercase S. The season is spring. Today the temperature is, well I checked it on my phone before I started this video, and today the temperature is 58 degrees. Okay? It's 58 degrees. Make sure you do that degree symbol. Remember it looks like a little bubble next to the second digit. Okay? It feels cold, cool, warm, or hot. And it says circle one, but you know what? I need to circle two guys because it's not cool outside. It's a little warm, but it's not warm enough to, you know, walk around in shorts. So I'm gonna circle both of them because it's right in the middle of cool and warm. Right in the middle, okay? It's, it's a really nice day. Last part. Today, the leaves on my tree look. Hmm, can I do that yet? Nope, because I haven't done my observation yet. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna go outside and draw my tree. Remember, you wanna use as many details as possible. And you also wanna use realistic coloring. And then I'm gonna come back and finish this part. So today, the leaves on my tree look, well, However they look, I would write it in here, okay? All right, boys and girls. So what I want you to do when I'm done talking is pause the video, okay? I'm gonna explain that I want you to go outside, go do your blank tree observation for the month of May, for the season of spring, 
and then come back inside and press play and watch the rest of this video, okay? All right, have fun. Okay, so hopefully you finished your spring tree drawing, your observations and your drawing, and you came back in and pressed play for the rest of the video. It's okay if some friends didn't. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my spree, spring tree observation in my drawing, okay? And then I'm gonna go back and tell you what I wrote on my information page, okay? So here's my drawing. This was a tree in my backyard, okay? You can see that it has green leaves on it. It's not filled with green leaves, right? But there are quite a few. You could still see the branches somewhat. And then if you look really closely, there are some red lines. Those were those little flowery looking buds. If you watched my video from a few weeks ago, I talked about how the trees are beginning to bud and that's one of the first signs um, of springtime. All right, and then you could see that I also labeled the grass. The green grass was coming in. I labeled the tree trunk, the sun, and it's a pretty cloudy day, so I drew some clouds and I labeled the clouds as well. Okay, I'm gonna put this back on the board and I'm gonna tell you about what I wrote. So today the leaves on my tree look, I wrote green, period. So that's one sentence. Today the leaves on my tree look green, period. I wrote a second sentence, which you guys don't have to do, but I wanted to add that detail about the buds. So I wrote, there were also red buds, period. Okay, so you could always have a conversation with somebody when you're done about how your spring tree is different than the fall and the winter trees that you drew. Um, I want you to make sure that you try your best with your writing and your labeling. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? That you do a really good job of using realistic colors. You could see that Miss Miller doesn't have like a rainbow in the background because I didn't see a rainbow. You could see that my grass is green because outside I observed green grass, right? I didn't see orange grass and I didn't see blue grass. So do your best to make sure your observations are realistic, okay? And when you're done, you could always send me a picture. I would love to see your drawings, all right? Have a good time, guys.